As 2023 winds down, it's pretty clear that the 2020 price boom is over and prices are more consistent, allowing us to take a look back and see how each console fared and if another boom is in the future or if we're headed towards a crash. So let's start with the Xbox 360. Welcome to Retronomics, the series that follows price trends in video games, and I have been following price trends since before I even made this channel, but the first official Retronomics video was published in 2017, and for the first three years, price trends were pretty easy to predict. The last video in 2019 on Dreamcast prices suggested that they would steadily increase or remain roughly the same, and then March 2020, some stuff happened and suddenly we were all stuck in our homes, and instead of the economy crashing, like people were suggesting, collectibles boomed in value. Cars, Pokemon cards, and video games all shot up in value to the point where people were suggesting that 2020 would be the cheapest video games ever would be from here on out. And that didn't turn out to be entirely true, and over the next 10 videos or so, I'll have a bigger picture of how the 2020 price boom affected prices and maybe identify some specific causes. Perhaps we can finally predict where prices are headed without these videos being out of date in just just two months. So let's start out with the Xbox 360, since my previous buyer's guide on the system was released and I promised a Retronomics on the system. Before we get started, here's how Retronomics works. I get all of my prices from PriceCharting.com and all of the prices are for complete in-box North American copies. And at the end of the video, I have 26 games and the system price trends over the past year from November 2022 to November 2023, along with a brief summary of the price trend. If you're a fan of this type of content, make sure that you like the video and share it with anyone who might find it interesting. And if you are new here, make sure you subscribe because I have a lot more videos like this one planned in the future. So let's start out with some stats about those 27 items. I tracked the prices from February of 2020 until November 2023. And you can see in February, the sum of all the games that I picked was $518. Today in 2023, that sum is $1,173, which is a 126% increase from February of 2020. And that's pretty drastic, but the significant price increases only occurred in the past five months. And when you compare to a similar system like the PlayStation 3 whose prices saw a dramatic increase in May of 2021, we might be seeing the start of an Xbox 360 boom, especially as the digital storefront is scheduled to shut down in April of 2024. And it kind of makes sense given that the PlayStation 3 price spike in May of 2021 was due to the announcement that their digital storefront would shut down. But this video isn't about the PlayStation 3. That one will come later, so be patient. But some key standouts for the Xbox 360 saw a spike in December of 2021 when a slew of backwards compatibility titles were coming to the Series X. One Chimbara, Bikini Samurai Squad, 50 Cent Blood on the Sand, and Fair Files are all games that are on the list that I picked to talk about, and they all increased over 100% from March in 2020. And the notable exception on this list is Spider-Man, but then again, Spider-Man is a hot property with the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games being critically acclaimed and popular. I do realize that these stats are just on 27 games, so it's not the full picture, but when you do look at the average price for the whole library, it does point to similar spikes that these 27 items do. But it's less pronounced given that it includes games that simply aren't affected at all by these price booms, like popular games, rare games, and franchises all contribute to price increases, but a copy like Madden 05 or something like that isn't going to move the needle all that much. In in the future, I plan on including more games, but this video is kind of a dry run of the format and I'm already behind, so maybe I'll revisit the Xbox 360 when that happens, but for now, this previous format will have to do. When you look at individual game prices of all the games and filter out special editions, dev kits, and prototypes, there are only four games over $100. That's it. This is the first system that I've covered where that's the case. The PlayStation 3 has 13, and when you compare multi-platform games, the difference is pretty stark. Lollipop Chainsaw, for example, is $30 cheaper on the Xbox 360 than it is on the PlayStation 3, and it's mostly due to that spike 
of the storefront shutting down back in May of 2021, indicating that a lot of these price trends are isolated to the system itself, not necessarily the game property. But we do need a lot more systems to make that conclusion, which will come in due time. Now let's get into the 27 items I asked my subscribers for and as a reminder the prices are as of November 29, 2023 but the exact price isn't the focus it's a tool to forecast trends but historically the price trend from day to day is a variance of a couple of dollars at most and it really doesn't change my analysis of the price trend. And so with that out of the way let's take a look at some price trends. The Xbox 360s model is probably one of the best Xbox 360s that you can buy. It's got Wi-Fi built in, it's quieter, and it's got a larger built-in hard drive. The best of all is that they're pretty cheap. I actually picked one up locally for $50 and it had a 320 gig hard drive in it. If a box is that important for you for the console, it's not that much more expensive or you can just search around locally for a bundle and save even more. Alice Madness Returns is pretty inexpensive despite American McGee announcing that EA would no longer be open to a sequel. This is the second game based on the Alice in Wonderland characters, but it's a bit more demented. It's a fun platformer that is worth the going price. Blue Dragon is one of the few games on this list that is doubled in value since the start of 2020. And this is an old school turn-based RPG with ties to the Final Fantasy creators. It's a one-off RPG and it has the tendency to take off in value over time, so I would consider looking into this if you're a fan of the genre. Lost Odyssey is another RPG produced by the Final Fantasy creator and it's pretty inexpensive to boot. Seems to be immune to the price boom, but like I mentioned with Blue Dragon, some RPGs that didn't get much love when they were released tend to be a bit more expensive down the line, especially since these beloved developers aren't getting any younger. Death Smiles is a shoot 'em up or cute 'em up, depending on how you feel about lollies. And this game used to be pretty expensive back in 2021, but the release of both the first and second game on modern platforms has caused the price to plummet. Personally, I think that this is a pretty cool game, so if you feel like playing it on its original platform, this is the one to pick up. Halo 3 is the last Halo produced by Bungie and is considered by some to be the last good Halo game. This game is on the Master Chief Collection which is available on Game Pass and most people who would still play this game play the multiplayer which more people are on the Master Chief Collection which could explain why this game is so cheap. Less than 10 bucks for a great game? Pretty good deal. Blitz the League 2 jumped 3 years ago and has rose to its peak of $76 last year and now it's back to the price where it was before it started climbing. I don't think that it will go back to the pre-price boom anytime soon, especially since the NFL doesn't have any desire to make more violent football games, especially after they nerfed the Blitz Arcade 1-Up, so buy now or wait. The Silent Hill HD collection is inexpensive, but that's because the ports aren't all that great, but I think a lot of people seem to be content with it despite its faults. With the Silent Hill 2 remake coming out soon, I think that we'll see the price drop even further, assuming that Bloober does a good job with it. Beautiful Katamari is part of the Katamari series and retains the same formula as previous versions. The price hasn't really been affected by the 2020 price boom, but it did have a little spike in February of 2022. Otherwise, it's been the same price for quite a while, so if you're down for an inexpensive 360 game, you can't go wrong with a little Katamari. Dead or Alive 4 is another game seemingly immune to the 2020 price boom, but it had a spike in January of 2022 going up to a whopping $20, but now it's back down to its normal price. If you like this style of fighting game, it's one to get, especially if you like jiggle physics. Lollipop Chainsaw is on the rise and will probably continue to rise as the remake approaches despite assurances from developers that it will not be censored. It might be one game to wait and see if the price will drop when the remake finally releases sometime in 2024. Earth Defense Force 2025 is a wild and crazy game. It's just good old fashioned shooting fun. It's a game that doesn't take itself too seriously which is a breath of fresh air for the 360 era since a lot of games were dark and gray realistic games. The price has been relatively steady for years so maybe pick it up before 2025 comes along and the price potentially spikes. 
Spider-Man Web of Shadows is a game that has a price trend similar to other consoles that I've covered in the past, which is good for me, but bad for you. Spider-Man games of old have seen a resurgence after the three great PlayStation games came out, and it seems to be experiencing the same spike that we saw last year, so maybe wait it out, or if you see it locally, snag it. Ghostbusters the game is considered to be the sequel to the first Ghostbuster film since it is the last time that all original actors were together and it's written by them too. The game used to be higher priced but the remaster came out on modern platforms and the price has just plummeted. Is it still worth it to get it on the PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360? Well for the per price I think so. Fable 2 was an interesting RPG concept that people beg Microsoft for a sequel and we'll finally get it eventually but hey if you're interested in playing the backlog consider picking this up for cheap because I have a feeling that some people might buy it when the third game is finally released or you could play it on Game Pass. Fear Files skyrocketed in 2021 from $15 to $75 seemingly overnight because it was added to the backwards compatibility list, but the price has normalized two years later. It doesn't appear to be taking off anytime soon, so might be a good time to buy since it is a compilation of expansion packs from the first Fear game and you can't buy the pack online. Rumble Roses Double X is a follow-up to the PlayStation 2 classic Rumble Roses, but it doesn't include a story mode. I still prefer the PlayStation 2 version, but this one is good too. The gameplay is tighter and the graphics are better, and the price of this game has been trending down slowly since its peak in 2021, even though it was added to the backwards compatibility list in 2018. So maybe see if it will drop a little more before pulling the trigger. Red Dead Redemption is super cheap and backwards compatible on the Xbox Series. It's also available on the PlayStation 4 and Switch, which keeps the price fairly low. It's critically acclaimed and honestly it's surprising that it's so cheap, but then again it is one of the best selling games of the era. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts was a major letdown to fans of the series, but if you don't count the Smash Brothers, it's the last time that Banjo and Kazooie have been in the limelight. But the game does have some charm, and if you're willing to look past the complete change of pace, building is kind of fun, albeit clunky, but for under 20 bucks, or maybe with the Viva Pinata double pack, it seems worth the risk. If you've ever wanted to know where the Press X to Doubt meme came from, LA Noir is where you should go, because that's where it came from. A ton of Rockstar games came out during this era, and LA Noir is one of them, but it's on modern platforms and it's not backwards compatible, so you'll have to buy the remastered version if you want to play it on modern consoles, but if you have a 360 to play it on, it's pretty cheap. Rayman Origins is another inexpensive great game to add to your collection, although it is on modern platforms and higher resolution, but hey, if you're collecting on a budget, this is a great choice to start with. Blur is Mario Kart with real cars and it's a lot of fun, and it's a shame that no one really played it when it was new, but luckily it is still pretty inexpensive, although more expensive than the majority of the games that I'm talking about on this list. It wasn't affected by the price boom either, and seeing that this game bumps and spikes since price charting started tracking it 10 years ago, I would consider buying it now. One Chimbara Bikini Samurai is a titillating hack and slash game that's actually pretty good. Don't judge a game by its cover, I guess, but it comes at a price as it is one of the more expensive games on this list. I don't think that we'll be seeing a sequel or remake anytime soon in the States, so I would buy it within the next six months or so. NBA Jam was originally supposed to be a pack-in title with NBA Elite 2011, but that game never came out on the 360, so we got a full version of NBA Jam instead. This is pretty much NBA Jam from the 90s, but with an updated graphics and roster, and it's pretty cheap. If you are interested in arcade action, I would pick it up. Okay, none of the games I listed were over $100 until now. F1 2013 is the most expensive game on the 360 and holy smokes is it expensive. But it wasn't like that until recently. Is it because Formula 1 fans bought it because it has a unique roster? Nope. Looks like it's pretty rare and no one really caught on until recently and the PlayStation 3 version isn't and it's still 20 bucks. But there's a debate on whether 2013 is actually good or if it's just hype. I would probably only buy this if you're a completionist. 
NCAA Football 2014 is another expensive title, but not because it's rare, but because it's the last NCAA football game. The price of this game does tend to track along with the college football season, so I would wait a little bit to see if the price goes down in February, but I would wait until summer of 2024 where EA has promised that they will finally release a brand new game, and if that does ring true, I have a feeling that this game price will plummet really quick. 50 Cent Blood on the Sand is another game that has spiked suddenly in 2021 and is now settled in price but double what it was before the jump. I doubt we'll ever get any of these games re-released, so like Def Jam 5 for New York, it is probably a good idea to keep an eye out to see if the price will drop and then snag it. Thanks so much for making it to the end of this video, I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give it a like and share it with those who might find it interesting. And if you are new here and you like what you see, please subscribe for future content. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Snicktendo. Thanks so much for watching, I'm Nick, and I'll see you next time.